movie thinks that by cutting back and forth between T2's Linda Hamilton and a surplus of logos that we're going to forgive the 80 seconds it takes to ramble through this and movie is very wrong. Reruns. There once was a future in which humankind was hunted. Terminarization. Why the f*** are these assholes coming out of the ocean? Is there some advantage to sending your army to Terminators through the water? Wouldn't that slow them down just a little bit? How far do these robots have to travel before hitting the beach? Also, why are there so many skeletons and on this beach already? Do humans keep setting up camp at a beach cemetery? God, I would love to know what kind of information Skynet gave the Terminator in this case. Yeah, look on a beach in 1998, Guatemala. Records show the Connors were living it up there, throwing caution to the wind. The only thing remaining after Judgment Day was the receipt at the bar where John got his Fanta Orange. We were very lucky to have it. Once. I saved three billion lives, but I couldn't save my son. Okay, so then did the machine ignore you? Why did the assassin machine look like the Terminator from T2, only this time he was evil again? Why is the Terminator walking directly into the ocean after doing murder? Mames. Yes, sir. Guy making out with his girlfriend can't tell the difference between a happy oh my god and a concerned oh my god while making out cliche. She kicks all the ass here and the camera cuts so much I didn't get to see anything good. Also, Mackenzie Davis isn't terminating me in this scene. Don't thank me yet. Aren't there a lot of unconscious cops she could try to compare sizes with before taking this guy's clothes? Let me get this straight. In the future, they learn time travel, but they didn't learn where exactly they were sending you? And what about timing? The woman he needs to kill just left. Why couldn't Skynet, or, um, I mean, Legion, send this guy an hour earlier? I see Danny and her brother both work at the factory of sibling proximity convenience. Riding bikes in factories. Grace, despite having a head start over the Rev-9, shows up at this factory late, despite stealing a car and having all the advantages to get to Danny first. And not only that, they show up at the exact same time! How's the game? Why even bother with the niceties? Is it more polite for you to smash this dude into a wall when he's facing you? Así no te puedo dejar entrar. Yeah, it looks like you've been really strict about that rule. Look at all those people denied access because they aren't wearing a helmet or vest. And remember, one dude is riding a bike through here. Is safety a thing or is it just for guests? I used to have. Why give your target any chance to know something is up before you kill them? Jesus, I could terminate her better than these assholes. Danny would have never seen a gun and the resistance would be over. Grace, the literal ex machina, saves the day. But I'm just wondering what all the other security people thought when she came walking through here with an obvious shotgun. And it's not like she found some back way into the factory. After she pummeled that one guard, she was outside again. And from what I can tell, you have to go through at least two levels of security to get inside. The metal detectors and the turnstile area. Nobody asked for ID, nobody thought it was weird some new chick was walking through. Every time Skynet, or in this case Legion, fails to kill someone from the past, that means the future is altered. If Skynet still comes into existence, that means a new set of circumstances led to their creation. So I'm still trying to figure out how the new Skynet realizes that their old models didn't work and they know to make more advanced models. Going by T2 alone, the Terminators from that movie were completely obliterated by liquid steel. It's not like Skynet found evidence of the past and said, okay, apparently we've existed before and we sent some Terminators to do the job. So now we have to think outside the box, people. Wow, that looked totally real. Mackenzie Davis isn't sledgehamming me in this scene. Everyone just watches them run away and no one called the cops about that huge fight on the factory floor, I guess. I'm augmented. Augmented? You might as well say I'm different or I'm special. That's how vague I'm augmented it is. Butternut squash shaved into faux spaghetti noodles is augmented. Christ. Oh, so does she have spidey sense or what? Is this ever explained? Update, the movie never explains this. Look, this pickup outruns the f***ing industrial scooper tractor in about a half mile, and we move on to a quiet scene of reflection, but somehow this movie will make a chase of it. Look, you can tell me that the Rev-9 is this close to Grace and the others if you want, but you can't tell me he's driving this slow toward them. Mackenzie Davis isn't impaling me in this scene, so he has enough whatever magic to spawn a twin of himself? How the f*** does that work? Also, why hasn't he used this before? Tell me one time before now during this chase that he couldn't have benefited by having a clone bot. We have to go. Well, he died for nothing. Pretty sure he died for nothing regardless, but whatever. I don't get how the Black Ooze metal works if he has a robot skeleton core he separated from earlier. Like, how does he who? How does he what? Son of a bitch. The fate of the world depends on me killing this Terminator, which I will later state I have done many times, but getting my truck back is way more important than making sure the Rev-9 is dead. I have to tell my father about the Evo. It's not possible. I could just say your father is dead, but I'll wait for you to plead with me one more time before I give you the relevant information. I don't get why either of these two need each other. The liquid metal part disengaged and did plenty of damage on his own, not needing a skeleton. And the skeleton was driving that truck and doing stuff, like he didn't need to look like people. This is like when they separated the saucer section in Star Trek The Next Generation and you wondered what good it did, but also wondered why they didn't do it that way every time. I need meds. <laughs> Can you be more specific before you kill everyone? I save your ass, then you steal my truck. 
Wow, it didn't even take long for you to find where they went. Like, you couldn't have spent five minutes making sure the Rev-9 was dead? I mean, you don't know it's going to require a Hoover Dam turbine yet, so... You got a phone? Yes? Could I see it for a sec? Okay, she's going to throw it out the window and the girl will act rude and I'm typing this without ever having seen this movie, but having seen movies in general. We should have done this in the bathtub. Have you seen the bathtub? Is the bathtub crawling with more germs than this bed probably is? I think the cyborg with dirty clothes can handle a dirty bathtub. I keep my cell phone in a chip bag. The foil blocks the GPS signal so they can't track me. If you believe that, then why didn't you just go to a gas station and buy Danny a bag of chips before you threw that shit out the window? Hermits. How did you know how much of each to use? I don't. Yeah, just stick a random dosage into somebody and see what happens. I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't try this at home, kids. Movie that retcons Terminator Salvation just got a lot more Terminator Salvation than I think it intended to. These squiddy Terminators look cool and all, but why don't they have guns and How do you know we'll be on that bridge? I get these texts. Precise GPS coordinates, dates, times, down to the second. But instead of getting there well ahead of time, I wait until all sorts of damage and death occur. Also, if the text is giving her GPS coordinates about the freeway, then why not the auto factory where everything went down before that? The air splits open above a parking lot and a Terminator drops out. But in this case, I wasn't anywhere near where anyone dropped out, just where the action needed me to be to enter the story. It's f***ing weird. Oh, we need to ditch the car. Get off the grid. Um, if you are carrying a cell phone, you are on the grid. Remember how you were going on about all the cameras and how a human can't go anywhere without leaving a trail? I believe you said a mile wide, remember? Because, God, it was like five minutes ago, actually. The Terminator's job has got to be difficult, right? I mean, how do you know that by killing these two guys that Legion still becomes a thing? Almost anything you could do could affect Legion's existence, right? And remember, this movie isn't playing by endgame rules. Danny gives birth to the one man that can stop it. You can pretty much tell at this point that Danny isn't giving birth to the leader of the resistance, that she is the leader of the resistance, but Grace continues to not answer the question like a dick. The future wants you dead for the same reason it wanted me dead. Didn't it occur to you that Skynet Legion also sent Terminators to kill John himself? It's weird that you don't, since that's what T2 and the beginning of this movie were all about. Why does it necessarily have to be the mom? Craziest part machine too. This is all this guy needs to think the story is bullshit. Slice a fly in half. That's it. This Terminator tries to use a drone to kill his target, and that's unsportsmanlike for a Terminator. I'm sorry. Bitch move, Rev-9. There's a drone up there. I don't hear anything. Yeah, well, you're not an augmented super soldier from the future, are you? Strange how you didn't hear the drone before it caught you on camera, though. Deadly force is authorized. Another bitch move, sending in the armed forces to kill them for you. When you reach the wall, there's a door beneath. Flacco will show you the way. This is exactly the wrong-minded thinking that made the Broncos trade for Flacco in 2019. I cannot see She's wanted in 50 states and you're escorting her with one guard? Honestly, this ass-beating is on you. I like how they're all like, we're our military, but let's tackle him. Aw, I was hoping he'd turn into a helicopter. He watches their chopper get away and are no other guards coming after him? Shouldn't his face be on so many cameras now that he is just as wanted as anyone else? You cannot put yourself at risk. Who'd have killed Sarah? That doesn't matter. When are you gonna get it? When you tell her the reason why she's so goddamn important. Pay no attention to that guy that looks exactly like the sword machine thing that just sliced up half the immigration detention center. Why is Carl watching a college football game between Boston College and North Carolina State that took place in 2013? I don't have a photograph of John. I thought that they couldn't find him if they didn't know what he looked like. But now I'm forgetting his face. You mean Edward Furlong? Yeah, me too. Nice family. Is she a Terminator too? No, she's a Terminator Salvation. I met his mother, Alicia, a few months after I killed John. Oh, you don't get to say his name. You don't get to say his name, cliche. Because without purpose, you're nothing. Talk Thanks, Agent Smith. Jeez. Do all future human killing AI robots share a playbook or something? Wait, you grew a conscience? Grace would absolutely terminate at cinema sense. So what about the texts? I mean, Grandal displacement occurs. There's a shockwave through time, measurable before the event. Oh. Not why. To give you purpose, Sarah. I thought it would bring meaning to your son's death. This is requiring so much exposition, it's almost not worth having Arnold in the movie. You chose to change the future. You chose to destroy Skynet. So when did she destroy Skynet? She apparently didn't do enough to ensure Skynet didn't send Carl to 1998 to kill John. And then Carl started sending her texts when he felt some sort of shockwave in time or some bull. 
She used those texts to kill Terminators, but when did Skynet officially die and Legion take over? Or did Skynet die when Carl completed his mission? Anyway, Sarah didn't kill Skynet, timed it. Beer with lime in this shot, but not in this shot, but definitely this shot. So you're Carl. That's what everyone calls me, yes. I'm never gonna call you Carl. If I thought for a second they were trying to make this a bad melodrama, it might be brilliant, but they weren't, so it's not. I was actually having fun when it was Mackenzie Davis kicking ass, but I do not care about Grandma and Grandpa's feud. A Terminator has just killed your whole family. What do you do? Well, no reason to practice anymore. I'm awesome at shooting now. You know these guns won't kill it. They'll only slow him down. According to your description of his capabilities, our best option is to secure a military-grade energy weapon. You're just now talking about this. Like, as soon as he showed you the weapons locker, you should have been like, this totally won't work. And Carl here could have figured this out after you told him about the Rev-9. But sure, let's waste time shooting f***ing watermelons. This is as good a place as any to sin that this movie actually expects the audience to believe that a Terminator not only turned good, but also married a woman that has for years not realized he isn't human. And that's some shameful s***. I won't be back. Oh, man. They could have called this Terminator groan and bored him. Also, gee, I wonder if he will make an epic sacrifice to save the day, which is exactly what it did at the end of Rise of the Machines, even though this movie says that movie doesn't exist. Hell, T2 even sees him sacrifice himself for the greater good. So just know that's coming, if you didn't already. Can't spell mom without M&Ms. They missed their chance for that one. You're welcome, M&M Mars. You know, Sarah, I don't commit treason for just anybody. Wow, what did Sarah do for this guy to get him to deliver an EMP to her? We have no idea the history between these two, and it seems just downright false that he's risking his neck for her. If it was the psychologist from the first two Terminator movies, it would be more realistic. <laughs> Rev-9 gets a military-grade helicopter, and all he can do is pull out a gun and start shooting at the building. This mother couldn't find one with some rockets on it. And this is the first time he's even using a gun since the auto factory. It's all been blades and this whole time. Now he has a gun. What an asshole. Okay, you made me laugh. I'll take a sin off. Look, I know shit happens. You can't fault the characters for trying to get the EMP just like the script tells them. The EMP would have made beating the Rev-9 easier and this movie shorter. But you know what else could have made the movie shorter while also providing the necessary difficulty this movie so craves? Not even bringing up the EMP in the first place. Ah, Greg Sestero. You saved me. And you raised me. And you taught me to hope. So in a way, Grace is the future child of Danny, but it's Danny herself that is the leader of the Resistance, which is exactly what I told you earlier. So the movie gets another scent. You are the future. I believe that Danny is the future. Also, let's talk about Legion's plan. They decide to go back 22 years to kill Danny. But why this particular time frame? In 1984, killing Sarah Connor before she gave birth to John made sense. In 1995, trying to kill a weirdly older than 11 John Connor made some sense. Why not try to kill her when she was younger? This would've been easier if she was eight, right? I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this before. But you told me that the Danny I'd meet in the past didn't handle it. This is such bull This is the I didn't tell you because I wanted to protect you cliche in different clothing. The Danny we've seen in this movie ran into her boss's office and yelled at him for replacing her brother with a machine, which signifies strong leadership qualities. She was the mom of her family. How did future Danny not remember that? This reason is such bull I'm adding five cents. The Rev-9 continues to find military vehicles that don't have any rockets on them, making him have to smash out windshields and attack in ways that are less efficient. It's the most curious bullshit in this movie. This movie saw Spider-Man Homecoming's dark and confusing nighttime airplane action sequence and said, man, the only way to top that is adding a second plane. Why doesn't the liquid metal portion seep into the plane while his endoskeleton does the climbing He could be in there right now laying waste to the future, but no, he has to make sure he makes this climb like he's Alex Honnold. Once again, Rev-9 only uses his blades and mysteriously has no guns now that he's fighting up close. You can't just smash this glass. We've seen you do it to two f***ing windshields in the last 15 minutes, and he somehow can't liquid metal into this Hummer. How does an advanced machine forget so much? The Rev-9 just now realizes he can do this. Hmm, vehicle falling out of a plane with a parachute. Both the Fast and Furious franchise and the A-Team did this already, and they had the balls to do it during the daytime. Okay, we've done Old Arnold, Old Sarah Connor, Freeway Chase, an airplane assault that would cream Bane's jeans, a gun vault, a training montage, a few F-bombs. What staples of the action genre are we missing? Hoover Dam. My God, Johnson, you've done it again. Also, this movie had six writers, and you can tell by how tropey and watered down and Hoover Dammy it is. So the parachuting Hummer landed in the exact same spot as the free falling on fire military cargo plane? That's not how physics works. Once again, Hollywood plays paper football with a giant vehicle. Touchdown! No one will be seated during the drowning of the Humvee portion of the movie. Also, you'd think a movie produced by the guy that directed The Abyss would have better underwater footage than this, but you'd be wrong. Come on, she shot Arnold three times in the chest in his living room and he didn't even flinch, but three times underwater through glass is enough to dislodge this more advanced mother Movie doesn't John Wick three the bullets underwater and that's just plain wrong. There's another weapon. 
my power source. Jeez, feels like you could have strapped a spare power source on Grace before she made the trip and just used it to kill the Rev-9 earlier. And yeah, I know about the rules of Terminator time travel, but still, we all know they could have figured out a way. This is pretty close to that magic sword that those assholes didn't use in Pacific Rim until it was plot convenient. I can't get through that door. I kind of wish Arnie had shown up after the women got the door open, or at least gave Grace the shot so she could open the door. The way he shows up here makes this whole scene seem like he's the husband who can open the jar of pickles. We make her stand here. This is our kill box. This wide open room with many access points that you aren't familiar with at all? Well, f*** it. Everyone's going along with her, so I guess they know better than I do. But this seems like a terrible last stand spot. <laughs> Touchdown! I don't want to bludgeon a dead horse here, but why does Liquid Metal Guy need a skeleton? Why don't they always fight separately? This is like that f***ing button on Kit that tricked him out with all the fins and that made him supersonic, but then Michael only ever pulled it out at the occasional climax. What the f***? Now throw the pieces in the turbine! Don't just look at them. Carl throws the endoskeleton into some on the second floor, because that's going to kill it. You got a perfectly good turbine here. Your CPU should have already figured this out. Movie has never explained why it would be better for his two distinct pieces to ever be one piece. But this Rev-9 is the stupidest robot since the happy birthday Polly asshole from Rocky Fool. No! This is what I've decided to call the Yahtzee Shakeup, where a movie does something surprising, maybe even shocking, and all the characters are knocked back by it, and the audience is compelled to lean in to see who survived and who didn't, and in what shape everyone is. Danny, this is what you sent me here to do. You mean, pull out your power source to kill the Rev-9? You could have done that a long time ago. I mean, yeah, you would have had to wait until Danny was a confident ass kicker who believed in time-traveling robots, but that was ages ago. You could have given the power source to Carl, and he could have stuck it in the dumb mother <laughs> No. We both knew I wasn't coming back. Skip! I mean, look how small this power source is. You could have put like 40 of these in Grace and knocked that Rev-9 out in no time. Okay, maybe not 40, but certainly more than one. Carl! Wake up! That apparently worked. Ark. Oh look, Arnold did find a way to sacrifice himself at the very end of the movie, just as I suspected. What innovative, such creative. You know, power source seems to be good at making the Rev-9's face all sparkly, but it doesn't seem to be doing to actually kill it. It requires Carl to hold him down for this thing to finally work. A charm. Oh, f you, dude. Also, she didn't hear that Is she really going to walk away from this place without completely melting away these robot leftovers? You know Miles Dyson's son Cyborg is going to get his hands on these parts and make Legion or Skynet or the Justice League happen if you don't do something, right? Over ten full minutes of credits for a movie where half the time it was too dark to see anything. Anyway, Mr. NBE-1 here, a.k.a. Megatron, wants to use the cube to transform human technology to take over the universe. She's got a fat ass. Diego, feel bien? I'm a leaf on the wind. If we lose today, we won't get the fight enough. I know the pressure on you is enormous. We gotta move. We? There is no me in you. Not no more. You begin a luck. Based on the weapons we have, I estimate our chances at 12%. So you're telling me there's a chance. Now what's the next step of your master plan? Crashing this plane. Gotta get a Peter Pan right here off of this dam, right here. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> 